Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Window Shopping. We're changing it up a little bit this week. We've got a different background. And this home is especially special for a couple of reasons. Um, and there's a reason why we picked it. You know, in many parts of the country, there are famous homes, right? Falling Water, um, the Farnsworth House in Chicago. There are these homes that just are so iconic that they really sort of kind of transcend being just a house. And out here in Southern California, we have something that goes even further than that. We actually have legendary, iconic tracts of homes, whether those are the Crestwood development up uh, up above West Los Angeles in the hills, uh, the Eichler neighborhoods uh, in Orange, or in this case, a very special neighborhood called the Modern Eke Homes that was developed shortly after World War II in Mar Vista in 1948. This neighborhood is special because it is the first neighborhood in Los Angeles to receive a historic preservation overlay zone designation. So it's the first neighborhood that got a historic designation. So, you know, not a neighborhood full of turn of the century craftsmen, but this home, this neighborhood representing modernist architecture. And not only are the homes themselves stunning, but it's really the ideas that they represent. Uh, these homes were built by an architect that in, in his day was known just as much for his political theories on housing as he was for his designs themselves. And that was Gregory A. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the house. It's spectacular. Um, this is 3550 Meyer Street in Los Angeles. It's actually in the Mar Vista neighborhood. This is three bedrooms, two baths, just under 1,800 square feet, though there's a little asterisk on that. Um, and this home was built in 1948. It's not our listing. It is listed by Brian Linder with Compass. Uh, but as always, especially with architectural homes, you really want your own representation, someone who has a fiduciary duty just to you. Um, and of course, you'll notice here, there's some kind of code here, likely eligible for Mills Act tax benefits. When you're in a historic preservation overlay zone, that actually kind of gives you a head start on that Mills Act application. It's sort of like being pre-approved for it. Your house just has to meet the criteria and they may ask you to correct some things on the exterior that are no longer original, especially as visible from the street. This neighborhood only has, I think it's 52 houses, 50, 52 houses. So it's very small. But what I find fascinating about this is just how popular these homes have become. And now if you look at this front facade, there's a couple of things here. You might say to yourself, this looks an awfully lot, awful lot like a Neutra home or perhaps a Rudolf Schindler home. And you're not seeing things. Gregory Ain actually worked for Richard Neutra, I think for a period of about five years in the 1930s. So the influence kind of is obvious there. One of the things that's sort of a bit of an iconic element to these homes is the way this roof line extends and covers the walkway. Uh, you can't quite see it here, but it's kind of got these V-shaped supports. That was an element that some developers actually even copied here in Southern California in the 50s. These deep overhangs also give you, you know, they really shield a lot of the house from the sun and allow these really big windows, which to be honest, in 1948 were pretty revolutionary and attract them to have this much glass. Uh, you'll notice this street, this home looks great, but in some ways it's very unassuming. These were not meant to be ostentatious look at me houses. They were meant to kind of blend in beautifully with the street scene and that's exactly what they do. Here you get a good look at these V supports here for this kind of roof overhang. Really probably the most iconic thing for this neighborhood that it's known for. You've got a lot of these transom windows too. And there's a really good reason for that. You know, many of the modernist architects in the 1930s, they wanted these unobstructed views through these plate glass windows, but it's California, it's warm, and they needed some method to get ventilation. So what you got were these really cool transom windows that I think were popular probably through the late 1930s um, up until maybe around the mid-1950s. These were pretty popular. Got some great uh, areas of back here. 
This is that backyard area looking at the back of the house. Again, you've got these really tall windows just looking into that living room, deep overhangs. Um, I want to head inside. So this is the approach, by the way. I mean, what a cool entry for a house. This one, you know, they're they're talking about the garage as a conversion and adding that to the square footage. These homes are originally between, I think, 1,000 and 1,200 square feet. They were not that big. Obviously, this land in West Los Angeles and Mar Vista is incredibly valuable at this point. These homes, as you can see, this one is listed for $2.5 million. They are incredibly valuable. And so what's happened is a lot of people have increased the size of these homes. Some of them have done that more successfully than others. Um, you know, the original point of these homes was to be efficient. That was one of Gregory Ains' big things was, I'd rather have style and good design versus just adding a bunch of square footage. So one of the things I love about this particular house is that it still has the original kitchen or elements of the original kitchen largely intact. And they've been really clever about how they've done some things. So for example, here you'll notice there is indeed a dishwasher, but they've actually created a front panel that makes it look just like it's another piece of cabinetry. Really cool to do that. You've got this area here that kind of goes along the front of the house. So the kitchen is at the front on this particular model. One of the things that Gregory Aim did with these homes is that the footprint of these homes is largely the same. But what he did that was unique is he would rotate the homes on the lot to give them a different feel. So some of them might have the kitchen at the front, others might have the kitchen at the side, merely because he rotated the building a little bit. Um, so you've got these kind of tall, almost effortless rooms in here, right? Like it feels incredibly spacious despite this not really being a very big house. Um, you can see kind of here in this kitchen area, a lot of these spaces were designed as multi-purpose. So you've actually got your dining area technically is right here. They've actually created a separate dining room, but I'll talk about that in a second on this home. So lots of cool little details in this home. And what I love about this is they've really kind of mixed some of the new materials like quartz with the original things like the cabinets. I think that's kind of the right way to go with a house like this. Um, as you can see, it's simple, elegant, and effortless. Uh, the living room is really big in these homes. Um, I think this one might have been enlarged a little bit from its original size. Um, I don't remember them being quite this big. I think this overhang might have been a little bit deeper uh, when these homes were built. Um, you've got an original fireplace here. These are the original bricks. You can see some weathering. I actually like the patina. It reminds us that this home, you know, that the, that this home is original. And then you've got this space here, which is kind of an office bedroom space. Um, when these homes were built, they, they had something really cool. They actually had some movable walls. And Gregory Yang's idea was to make these homes flexible. So on paper, they were originally a three-bedroom design, but they didn't have to be. You could kind of change whether a room is closed off or whether that could become a dining room or maybe a den type space. So there was, there was supposed to be a lot of flexibility in the design of these homes. Again, they've, they've done kind of a very clever replacement window here to get even more ventilation, and they've done it in a way that looks like it could have been original uh, right in here. I think that kind of sensitivity is really important when you own a home like this. This primary suite bathroom, again, simple, effortless, elegant. Um, you know, it's not trying too hard. You know, 20 years from now, this bathroom is going to look great. It's not going to look like it was done in a certain year or a certain time. So honestly, they've got some awesome built-ins in this office space. Uh, this is the other bathroom in the home. It's a little bit more of a throwback. And then this is that space where they have converted this garage into kind of living space. And, you know, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Clients ask us all the time, what are the rules? What can you call square footage in a home? And technically, the MLS rules are you can call whatever you want square footage, right? Um, the only requirement is that you have some justification, but there's no formal rule for what counts as square footage or not in an MLS listing. Appraisers, on the other hand, have their own rules that they use, right? Like, is the space contiguous, meaning is it attached and direct to the home? Is the space at the same construction standard, right, as the rest of the house? So because you have an enclosed sunroom 
that doesn't really count as space because it's not really built to the same standard. So some of this is a judgment call, right? And it and it goes not only based on what an appraiser thinks, but what is prevalent and common for the area. My personal opinion, um, you know, looking at this, uh, my personal opinion here, let's go back on screen share here. My personal opinion is that I wouldn't call this living space in terms of square footage. I do think this is a wonderfully finished garage. It's got drywall, they've added some windows, skylights, but you'll notice some details here, right? They've taken a concrete floor and they've polished it. The garage door is still present here and these concrete stem walls, right? Nobody's gonna confuse this. The, anyone who walks through this house will know that it used to be a garage and it could very easily be a garage again. And I think to me, that's really the big test on whether this is in fact additional square footage or would we call this a bonus space, right? It's a finished out garage. It gives you a lot of flexibility, you know, but it doesn't necessarily really add to the square footage of the property. So here we've got kind of this backyard space. It is very secluded and private. Those of you who watch my videos know that I love that. I love urban lot areas that feel private and secluded. I think it's the best of both worlds. This shows you um, pretty much, this is an overhead view. The front of the street is out over here. So you walk up here into the house, backyard, side yard, side yard. Um, and I think that's all we've got really on photos. I mean, th this could be a postcard, right? Visiting, looked at cool houses in Los Angeles. You could send this to your friends back home if you're not from here. I mean, this is one of those neighborhoods. It is an iconic, legendary neighborhood in Los Angeles. That doesn't come cheap, but really I've been in a few of these homes and the design pedigree, I mean, Gregory Ain was just so far ahead of his time when designing these homes in 1948. A lot of the things that came into these homes are things that in fact, we've even adopted today, right? You know, it's homes in the late 2000s we see with these taller ceilings and extra windows up top. I mean, and he was doing this in the late 1940s in a tract home that was pitched as affordable for returning GIs coming back from the war. It was designed to be an affordable post-war development. Um, I think that's super cool. I'm a little bit sad that these are not necessarily affordable homes today. Not that anything in West LA and Mar Vista really is, but you know, it, it kind of goes away from the original vision like the Eichler homes, which was to bring design down to the masses. Uh, unfortunately, they just didn't build enough of these to go around and now we all love them. And that results in the price getting bid up. Anyhow, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we certainly enjoyed kind of researching a little bit on this one. Gregory Ain is super cool. If you ever see any of his developments, uh, it's always a trip to kind of go inside those homes. Um, if you'd like to see this home uh, or you'd like to get some of our expertise, we'd be happy to work with you. Or if you're looking for another architectural home or have an architectural home to sell, we would love to help you out as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and we will see you again real soon.